The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord tended to life, and he that had it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. These plagues are evil. And what's going to happen when the fool runs out? What's going to happen when the government shuts down? What's going to happen when people start to get a little itchy in their trigger finger? This is a land of debauchery and wicked evilness. And guess what? There is no love in this land. So guess what? The man next door, who you think is your friend, when his kids get hungry, he's coming to your house. Because he has no fear of the Lord. We got a precept. Second Andrew 6, 22 to 24. Let's see what he got in here. All right. This is the book of Second Andrew. Right. Chapter 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The four storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall give a sound. Which when they every man hear it, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still. In three hours they shall not run. That's right. When you think you're safe, there comes your so-called friend to fight you and take what you have because he ain't gonna do it out. Instead of us being loving towards each other, instead of us being brothers like the Bible has commanded us to be, we're gonna be selfish because that's what this land breeds, selfish ignorance, okay? I don't know, I don't care, all right? But you should care. This is the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahweh. Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahweh. That's right. He is not your friend. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. He is your King. You bow to a King. That's right. You don't walk up and say, what up, dude? What's going on, fam? He said, Lord, have mercy upon me. I come humbly as your servant to do your will. Come. We all are up here doing the Lord's will. That's right. like we could be somewhere else. We could be saying, we don't care about y'all. But we want y'all to understand that there is a rightful ruler of this planet, of this universe, right. of your very lives. And you need to respect him and do what you were told. That's right. That's right. These things are happening because we are hard-headed children. That's right. Israel needs to wake up and take its rightful place as the princes and priests on this earth. That's right. And we shall not be afraid, astounded, or dumbfounded. Because we have this blueprint called the Bible. And it told us to be prepared. So guess what? When you are there running, scared, we are prepared. And we are out there telling you that it's not too late to wake the hell up. You have a God. And you should be thanking your lucky stars that he is your God. Let's go. Okay, hold on. 
the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Let's go. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. Give them what? Give them warning from me. One more time. Give them warning from me. The Lord is telling us to warn you. You hard-headed ingrate. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou given him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. We ain't doing this for our help. We're doing this because we're commanded to. We want to save your life. And we don't want to take the blame for not saying anything. Let's go. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. That ain't going to be me, people. That is not going to be me. Is that going to be you? No. Is that going to be you? No. I'm going to tell you whether you like me or you hate me. All right? Stop being homosexuals. Stop smoking weed and doing drugs. Stop getting drunk. Stop being adulterers and fornicators. Stop selling drugs to your brothers. Stop making our sisters whores. Stop it. Just say the Lord. God, that's right. Oh, that feet from the devil's. Oh, God. Feet from the devil's. I got you on 90. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, what was it? Psalms 91, 96, 91, 96. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 9. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil before thee. Because we have made the Lord our habitation, there shall be no evil before us. We are scared because we put the Lord first. Like these fools out here playing their music so loud and think that that's going to stop what we're doing. Yo, have some respect, yo, turn it down for the word of the Lord. You ignorant. And you're going to be destroyed. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Say that one more time. There shall be no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So you want to protect your household? Let the Lord be your refuge and your habitation. You live within these scriptures 24-7, 365 days. Non-stop, day and night. Continue. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God! You hear that? If you keep the Lord first, he going to send some angels to whoop some ass for you. That's right. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. You got a question, puppy? All right. Let's go. <laughs> thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your feet. That's right. We got, uh, we got peace up over here, Brother Sharpa. Psalms 34 7. 34 and 7. On that hole, where you at? 34 and 7. I got it right here. Who's got it ready? 
This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivered them. Let's say that one more time. The angel of the Lord, the what? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. Them that do what? The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And we already understand that fearing the Lord means to keep his commandments, to show him respect. You know what I'm saying? When the police pull you over, be like, yes, officer, you can have my driver's license and my registration. You're not giving them any flack. So give, don't give the Lord no flack. Show him some respect. Keep his commandments, and he will send the angels to protect you. You shall have no fear. Okay, yeah, Kim, you can go home. That's right. Verse That's 7. Right. The angel of the Lord campeth about, about them that fear him and, and delivered them. All they see the Lord is good. Bless he, the man that trusted in him. Bless the man that trusted in Yahweh. God. Let's go. Continue. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 13. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. Read that one more time. Because he has set his love upon me. He has done what? Because he has set his love upon me. He has done what? Because he has set his love upon me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He has set his love upon me. What is love? You might ask, is it a feeling? Or does the Bible define what love is? The book of first, the book of first John, chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. We do what? That we keep his commandments. Do what? That we keep his commandments. One more time for the listening audience out there. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. That's all it is, people. Continue with that scripture. Go back with it. And his commandments are not grievous. That's right. It ain't hard, y'all. If we love the, if we love God. Hold on. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 14. Because he had set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him? I will set him on high because he had known my name. And his name is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's right. Verse 15 He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. These things do not come without a prerequisite. And the prerequisite is if you fear the Lord, you show him respect, you keep his commandments, and the faith of Yahweh Shai, who died for the sins of Israel. That's right. Not everybody. He died for those that need salvation. And I don't see Esau needing salvation, or Elam, or none of these other nations that are depicted within the Bible. These are our oppressors. These are our former and present slave masters, all right? We are who need salvation. If you don't see that, you are blind. That's right. If you can't hear what they say, you are deaf and you are dumb. Continue. Verse 16, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You only can get long life if he deems so, all right? We live every day, every second, every minute, every hour by his grace and his grace alone. All right? So when you do something or when you say something, when you even have a thought, you say, Lord willing, people. Because it, it all gets done by his will. That's right. And his want. You know what I'm saying? We got precept here, Luke 1. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Bless be the Lord Yahweh of Israel. Of who? 
of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. You know that people? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Oh man, he redeemed the whole world, didn't he? And redeemed his people. His people? About his they have 40 something. Say that one more time. You have it? And ha blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. That's 7 and 6, though? Deuteronomy 7 and 6? Yeah, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Yeah, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Who are his people, though? Why is, that a, why is it possessive? You know what I'm saying? Why is it possessive? Y'all say y'all scared of Corona? Y'all think you're gonna get Corona? That's why you're wearing a face mask? <laughs> you know you look silly, right? Them things don't even work. You got a big hole in the side of your face. Corona gonna get right in through there. Got a mask because it's bloody party. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, read that for me. <laughs> this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out! Anybody know uh, who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? Moshe. Moshe. Oh, so Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy. And everybody knows the story of Moses, right? You know? Yep. Hey, he planted the seeds, right? Say so what? Did he plant the seeds? Yeah, he did a lot more than that, too. That's right. But that's something he did do, all right? But he didn't do it. The Lord did that through him. That's right. He did that for the right? nation of Israel. Right. All right? So Moses saved his people from Egypt, from bondage in Egypt, all right? So the nation of Israel was enslaved or in captivity to the nation of Egypt. And they were doing hard bondage. You know what I'm saying? They were turning big rocks into little rocks, as they say today. All right? And the Lord sent Moses to go ahead and help us and deliver his people out of this bondage. Right? So Moses, after they got out of this bondage, you know what I'm saying? Moses was giving the laws, he was giving the rules and regulations for us to follow, to give to his people, the Lord's people, all right? 